Most gardeners feel as the summer heat winds down that their gardening season is over, but I'm here to tell you, you have one more season left, the fall garden season. In today's video, I'm gonna go through 11 fall garden vegetables that you can grow no matter where you live. And the majority on this list taste better when the weather gets colder because the starches turn into sugars. With that said, let's get into the video. Hey, it's Devin from Devin the Gardener, growing in his own 4B, where I'm trying to inspire as many people as I can to start gardening. So number one will be your spinach. On average, spinach takes 40 to 50 days to maturity. Spinach is one of the most cold hardy vegetables that I've grown in my garden. It can handle temperatures as low as 14 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 10 Celsius and still thrive. This year, I tried to extend my growing season by placing a humidity dome over my spinach plants when there would be a light frost. For every extra layer that you put over your spinach plants, you actually increase your gardening zone by 1.5, or that's about 10 degrees Fahrenheit. To get better germination with your spinach seeds, put them in the freezer for a couple days, then place them in a damp paper towel and into the fridge for 24 hours before you plant them. My favorite spinach seeds that I've tried so far is the Monstrous Deviroflé, the Yukon and they renegade. So number two are my carrots. On average carrots take 60 to 80 days to maturity. Carrot tap roots need a really loose soil to grow deep. That's why you see all the world record carrots grown in compost and sand. Carrots don't germinate very well in excessive heat or if they dry out at any time of your germination process. What I've done in the past is I put a very thick layer of one to two inches of straw mulch on top of my carrot seeds. Carrots are one of the longest to germinate, taking 14 to 21 days. So don't get impatient. Just go out and check your garden if they've germinated after a 10 day mark. I find fall is the best time to grow my carrots. They become sweeter as the temperatures get colder because the roots store more sugars in the cold weather and you can use the snow and the frost as almost like a root cellar. My favorite carrot varieties so far are the Cosmic Purple, the Bellero, and the Scarlet Nantis. Number three are beets. On average, beets take 50 to 65 days to maturity. Did you know when beets were first discovered, they only ate the leaves? Later, they discovered that the roots were edible as well. You can actually take one of the leaves off each of your beet plants and it won't stunt any of the beet growth. Beets take around two weeks to germinate. And if you want really massive beets, then space them out four to five inches. Each beet seed, when you plant them, is two to four seeds. And one trick I do is I just let all the seeds that germinated grow to around one or two true leaves and I'll harvest the least healthy looking beets. You kind of get a two harvest system without thinning. My favorite beet varieties so far are the Red Ace, the Dark Red, and the Touchstone Gold. So number four are beans. On average, beans take 50 to 65 days to maturity. I actually had a ton of trouble growing beans for many years. You wanna harvest your beans as often as possible. The more you pick, the more beans that would be produced. How the plant grows is it'll grow, it'll produce flowers, and it'll produce beans. If you don't pick the beans, then it tells the plant that it should focus all its energy on surviving and developing the actual bean itself. There was a study in the 1980s where they added nitrogen to the bean plants at different times of their life cycles. And what they found was adding a heavy nitrogen fertilizer, as soon as the seeds have germinated, they got around three times more beans compared to if they added the nitrogen when the beans were being produced or other parts of the development. And then just do an overall balanced fertilizer, 555, for the rest of the time. I'll link to my favorite bone meal in the description. The prime bean growing temperatures is between 45 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. They are also self-pollinating, so they grow really well in containers or in pots. My favorite bean varieties so far are the Blue Lake, the Kentucky Blue, and the Royal Burgundy. Number five on this list is Pak Choi. On average, Pak Choi, also known as Chinese cabbage, takes between 40 and 50 days to maturity. My Filipino mother-in-law actually uses Pak Choi in almost all her cooking. It's kind of where I learned about Pak Choi. It wasn't a very common thing for me to eat. Fall is a perfect time to grow your pak choy because it doesn't do well in the summer heats. And the best time to harvest your pak choy is when the leaves are three to five inches. They taste the best that way. My favorite pak choy variety so far is the toy choy and the joy choy. They're funny names, but they taste fantastic. 
Number six is lettuce. Did you know that lettuce is the most purchased vegetable in the grocery store? On average, lettuce takes between 40 and 50 days to maturity. With germination, lettuce seeds are a bit different than something like carrots, where lettuce seeds need a bit of light to germinate. So don't plant them too deep. A quarter inch is perfect. And they can germinate when the temperatures are as low as 35 degrees Fahrenheit or about two degrees Celsius. I like to start everything in seed trays. One, because my garden space is full and I'm waiting for for it to free up with my summer vegetables. Two, I can control the growing conditions so I can move the seed tray around into the sunshine. When your lettuce seeds have around four true leaves on them, they're ready to transplant into your garden and they can handle a light frost. My favorite lettuce seeds so far are Paris Island Co, Butter Crunch, and Coastal Star. Number seven is kale. On average, kale takes 40 to 50 days to maturity. Years ago, it was said to be the super green with how packed it was with nutrients. Kale is also a biannual, which means if you plant it now and let it over winter, in the spring, it'll start producing seeds and you can collect them and you can use them for years to come. Kale leaves, when they get hit by a light frost, the starches in the leaves turn to sugars and make all the leaves taste much sweeter. For me, kale is a must have in my garden. I've always found kale transplants very well. It's extremely cold hardy, very easy to grow. My favorite kale variety so far is dwarf green curled winter borer and blue curled scotch. So number eight is broccoli. On average, broccoli takes 60 to 85 days to maturity. Did you know broccoli heads are made up a bunch of small, tiny flowers? They're called florets, and they're just a cluster of flowers. For many parts of the world, especially if you're in a hotter climate, you'll have better success growing your broccoli and your brassicas in your fall garden. That's because broccoli will bolt above 85 degrees Fahrenheit or about 30 degrees Celsius. And with your fall garden, the weather will start cooling as your broccoli heads start maturing. When you cut off the main head of broccoli, around two weeks later, you're gonna get some side shoots that you can harvest as well. They're not gonna be as large as your main broccoli head, but at least you get a few more harvests. Broccoli plants grow very large leaves. They span 18 to 24 inches wide and use a lot of nitrogen in the soil. What I'm doing this year for my favorite heirloom broccoli varieties is I let them go to seed. I'm gonna collect the seeds and then I'm gonna use that in my garden next year. My favorite broccoli variety so far is Green Magic and Gypsy. Number nine are peas. On average, peas take 50 to 70 days to maturity. Snap peas are one of my favorite things to snack on as I'm doing my gardening chores. The most common types of peas in your garden are shelling peas, snap peas, and snow peas. With snow peas, you eat the whole pea when they're underdeveloped. With shelling peas, like the name, you take the shell off and you eat the peas inside. Then you have snap peas, which are my favorite. One thing with peas is you can plant them very densely, one to three inches apart. Their rooting system isn't very deep, so they don't compete with each other. So it makes them great for small spaces. If you are starting your peas now, then I would suggest putting them into water for four to six hours. What the pea seeds will do is it'll soak up water and it'll help with your germination. You'll have better success from it. My favorite pea so far is Sugar Ann, Sugar Daddy, and Super Sugar Snap. Number 10 are potatoes. On average, potatoes take 80 to 100 days to maturity. They are one of the easiest vegetables to grow. They can grow in almost any growing condition. I have tested a bunch of different ways to grow potatoes in raised garden beds, in buckets, in ground, in grow bags. And what I found was in ground was by far the bigger size potatoes and I got more of them. If you don't have the garden space, then grow bags are completely fine. You can move them around as you go. You'll just need to water them more. To get a head start, chit your potatoes three to four weeks before you plan to plant them into your garden. That's leaving your potatoes in a dry, cool location with a bit of sunshine and you'll see eyes start to grow. Chitting is great for people that live in short growing seasons. I haven't found much of a difference if you cut them in half or use a whole potato. The only thing is the cost of the potatoes you get double if you cut them in half. My favorite potato variety so far is the Yukon Gold, the Red Pontiac, and the Kennebec. Number 11 are radishes. On average, radishes take 24 to 40 days to maturity. What I did this year was went radish crazy. Under all my summer crops, like my tomatoes, I would prune the bottom six inches so they don't get blight. I'd sow radishes underneath everything because they're not gonna go very deep. They're not gonna interfere with your tomatoes and they'll mature before your tomatoes actually need the garden space. For a radish that grows in 24 days, the chariot is one of my choices. For a 28 day radish, the Easter egg is a great choice. For a 30 day and one of my favorites is the French breakfast. If you're impatient like me, or you don't have a lot of time left in your fall garden, then radishes are a great thing in your fall garden. I hope you guys get a fantastic fall garden out of this list. Now that you know 11 of the very best vegetables to plant in your fall garden, I think if you stop doing these 15 raised garden bed mistakes here, you'll get a much bigger harvest. Click here to find out how. Love you, bye.